back, back to the good old days. Let me take you back, back to the good old days. Let me take you back, back to the good old days. Let me take you back, take you back to the good old days. Let me take you back, let me take you back, back to the good old days. Let me take you back. Salo falava malo le sue fuo mo male langie mama ni sambole vinaka ke mani sakana wekanda mai viti Hello everyone and welcome to Talano Tupe This is a show where we celebrate and highlight Pacifica's success in all its many forms Each week we sit down with a different Pacific thought leader to hear about their journey Our guest today is Latafale Alvaa She was the first woman to hold four Pacific regional titles In 2014, she won Miss Samoa New Zealand, Miss Samoa, Miss Pacific Islands, and Miss World Samoa. She also placed in the top 10 for Miss Universe New Zealand in 2018. She's a trained lawyer and now a foreign policy officer at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Before we sit down with our guest, we have some helpers from the Pacific Social Justice League to test our knowledge on the Blue Pacific. How well do you know our region? Let's find out with this quiz. Kia ora. Talofa lava. My name is Tosiri. And my name is Teresia. And, and we, we are, are members, members of... The Pacific, Pacific Social, Social Justice, Justice League. League. And we're going to give you a quiz on our blue Pacific. Let's go. Can you tell us which country this flag belongs to? Can you tell us the capital of this country? Can you tell us the name of the leader of this country? And lastly, can you tell us what currency they use in this country? Stick around to the end of the show so we can compare our answers. See you soon. Thank you to Lucia and to CV. I look forward to those answers at the end of the show. Up next, they say that who we are is a result of what we feed our minds. The shows we watch, the music we listen to and the books that we read. Our next segment is about Pacific literature and it's presented by my good friend Leilani Tamu. My name is Leilani Tamu. I'm a writer and an editor and I'm passionate about Pacific books. The book I'm going to tell you about today is called Tangata Ole Moana, New Zealand and the People of the Pacific. It's a heavy book and so it should be because it contains a range of essays that go back over the course of what is quite a long and complicated history. The book accompanies an exhibition which is at the Te Papa Tongareva, the Museum of New Zealand. And the book is edited by Sean Mellon, Kolo Kesa Mahina Tuai and Damon Salesa. This is an important book and it covers everything from early relationships and history between Aotearoa and its sister nations right through to more contemporary relationships and particularly since the huge wave of migration to Aotearoa in the 60s and 70s. Uh, the book includes a range of photographs and some really, really interesting small um, uh, I'd say almost like images of things that are in the exhibition. So it means that even if you don't get a chance to go to Wellington to see the exhibition, you can get a real sense of how rich and uh, wide ranging it is. It's a fantastic book and I highly recommend it. It's a great book if you want to give a gift that is really important for family. If you like this review and you'd like to read more reviews, or you'd like to contribute a review yourself, please check out my website. Thank you, Leilani. After the break, we're joined by Pacific beauty queen, Latafale Alvaa.
Welcome back to Talanoa Tupe. I'm here with the first woman to hold four Pacific Regional Beauty titles. She's also a musician, a trained lawyer, and a foreign policy officer at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Welcome Lata Fale to the show. Mahalo le sui fua fa te lava mole avanoa yo te fa te loa tu i lau si la fanga. So thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah. I feel really blessed with the talent we've been able to um, have on the show, and there's a lot that I want to um, talk about in terms of your story. So, well, first of all, though, you are new to Wellington, and how have you um, enjoyed being in the city? Yes, that's right. Um, so, windy welly, as they say. Um, it took me a while to get used to the wind. I've spent about <laughs> eight years of my life in Dunedin, so I loved the small city, um, and I loved being able to walk around, and I thought, hmm, how, well, how is Wellington going to measure up? And I tell you what, it's actually been really, really awesome. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, I love it. It's, it's small and compact, but also there's quite a lot happening, and it's, and it's got a yeah, good vibe to it so I'm enjoying it here. Can't beat Wellie on a good day right? <laughs> exactly yeah and I just learnt that song Can't Beat Wellington on a Good Day I think. That's an actual song? That is an actual song yeah <laughs> yeah it was one of the first songs that was recommended I listened to before I came down here so. Cool. It lives up to its name. <laughs> yeah. um, so um, you come from a family of very high achievers I've known your sister for a long time we went to law school together um, tell me what was that like growing up in, in such a um, yeah, a family where the standard is set really high. Yeah, it was, um, I think it was awesome. I had such an amazing childhood, very blessed. I, had, um, I have uh, wonderful parents, um, my mother Felicity and my dad um, uh, Enosa, Unasa Enosa. Um, and so my siblings are very talented and um, we've always had, uh, we've always been pushed to really give everything our best um, mm. and take lots of opportunities. So when I was young, um, I was able to look up to my brothers and sisters um, and really had some amazing just experiences looking and seeing how they perform and how they excel and how they do life life really. Mm. So there's seven years difference between me and my next sibling, um, Mary Tiana, oh, um, wow. and then there's 12 years difference between me and the oldest. So I think that age gap um, really benefited me yeah. because I would have been just, I was so young um, and also had these wonderful leaders that were, I guess, teenagers as well going into the adult life where mm. um, I really had some awesome opportunities just to see how to, how to do life and how to live life. And, how to make the most of every opportunity. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, my siblings are all wonderful. Now they have, there's nine, nine grandchildren <laughs> um, and they're all married and they're all yeah in their own industries um, super successful so mm. education is something that's been so key in our family um, you know my next sibling um, Mary Tiana she's a deputy um, principal uh, and so she follows my dad Stead who is yes, a principal um, right. and, and, and a leader in the education scene and my brother um, he is a professional sportsman or was a professional sportsman for a, a very long time and now now he's going, um, going into the ministry, mm. um, uh, into the church ministry that is, which is awesome. Um, and then of course my sister, um, my older sister Sarah Jane is just making um, wonderful, yeah, wonderful traction within leadership and governance. Mm. And so, um, yeah, they're, they're pretty full on. So, you know, <laughs> I have to, I, I've got good role models in my life. Yeah, yeah. well the apple <laughs> doesn't fall far from the tree. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, it's funny you mentioned um, your position in the family because mm. I I'm uh, similar to you in the sense that there's seven years between me and my next sibling as well. And I, I feel like you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get those great role models, but also um, you sort of get the chance to develop your own sort of leadership because you're kind of the youngest. Yes. Um, and it's almost like being in, um, in, in another, I mean, your parents are in a different um, position financially, sort of yes. the older they are. So you get yep. quite a lot of benefits being in that yeah. sort of space. Absolutely. And also you learn what not to do. <laughs> So um, as a young one, I took uh, yeah, a good lessons in learning maybe what not to do in terms of life situations. So mm. I think that's also the, like the benefit of being the youngest of the family is that, um, yeah, sometimes you don't have to walk through such challenges because you can learn mm. through, you know, what other people have gone, um, mm. have, have walked through. Mm. Um, and that's boded me well, boded me well, um, I guess, journeying as an adult, getting yeah. older. Yeah. And um, so you mentioned that you were in Dunedin um, before you were in Wellington. 
and um, so I know that you moved out of home sort of when you were 18, right? yeah. which is quite unusual um, in our bus speaker community. So what did you learn from that experience? Yeah, very unusual. And I wouldn't have probably moved out at all, but I'm so blessed. Um, I had a really good stint at high school. The last two years of my high schooling, um, I went to St. Cuthbert's College for seven years, and then I went to King's College for my last two years. And loved school so much. Um, so I was actually set up um, to win um, scholarships um, to various universities and Otago University offered me a five-year Faculty of Law scholarship. So blessed to have received that and that was the kick out the door for my parents being like, okay, you know, you can, yeah. you know, we'll be comfortable in letting you come, like go outside of the family and, and start journeying your life as a, as a young adult away from home. Mm. All my siblings stayed at home um, after school. Um, so I was very much, um, you know, out on the limb or just took a different, different journey. So yeah. in terms of moving away from home, um, I've always been quite independent um, and obviously having that age gap as well, doing my own thing and, and, and just, you know, taking those different opportunities. Um, I loved it <laughs> and um, I got plugged in with a good network down south um, and a good Pacific network as well um, who, yeah, were, you know, a family family there and, um, and I was really well supported. Um, but I can understand now going away from the, the family how it does grow you. Um, as an individual and as a young adult because you are no longer I guess in that family unit where people where your parents know where you are 24 7 or you know you're um, you're just walking a little bit more independently and so um, for me it was awesome but definitely a growing and a learning curve mm. but it's actually something now in my own life exper experience I definitely um, do encourage people to be able to get out and you know, especially for my faith journey as well, I was able to get out and walk on my own faith and see, you know, what are the things that are instilled in me as a young adult and whether I, whether or not I truly believe um, mm. in the things that I, you know, I have, I have grown up and learned and lived. And yeah, so it's a testing time, but I mean, that's the experience of life really. Mm. Um, and so I loved it and I stayed in wonderful contact with my parents. And I remember my mother, who and my mother and my father both came down to Dunedin, and, and uh, there were lots of tears. I did. <laughs> um, and there were lots of tears and lots of prayers, but because um, yeah, it's not just down the road, eh? No, Dunedin. no, no, it's not. <laughs> and um, being the baby of the family as well, um, I don't think mum and dad intended on me, you know, having an, having an empty nest, as yeah. you'd say, um, straight out of high school. Mm. So, um, but that was like a God-given opportunity, and you can't really say no to. The, um, such, I guess, the wonderful provision of scholarships that, yeah. that had been um, offered to me, yeah. um, and my parents, of course, are so encouraging of of, every th of taking opportunities as they come, and so mm. yeah, very blessed to have had that, I guess, exchange and depart from home into young adult life. And I, I didn't go straight into flatting. I went into a residential college, which I think provided me a really good basis of that support away yeah. from home um, and then I progressed into flatting and, and the like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you've been given um, a lot of opportunities and you've also been given a lot of talent. So you're well known for your achievements as a beauty queen, but you're also very talented in music and law and in sport and sounds like your whole family is too. <laughs> yes. um, have you had um, any difficulty in choosing what you put your efforts into or do you even feel like you need to choose between those uh, different areas of your life? Yeah, and I mean, this is a question that I often think about because, um, you know, they said you're, you can be a jack of all trades, but not a master at one. And um, and so for me, always having different opportunities come um, in front of me with different seasons. I haven't had to say yes to one and no to the other. I've, I've kind of um, just had opportunities present themselves where, okay, in this season I'm doing a lot more, you know, role modeling or beauty pageant or speaking or creativity. And then in this season, um, I'm maybe doing a little bit more academia or using a different strength. Um, it has been difficult to be able to choose in terms of career-wise which path to go down. Um, but again, I work by seasons and so for me it's looking at the season and what are the opportunities available for me at, at this present moment that are going to lead me one way or the other. Mm. But yeah, it is a little bit difficult and I think the more that I get older um, and the more that I progress life, I, I'm really encouraging of people to find out what their passion is and what they love to do um, because life 
life is just way too short for you um, to be doing something that one you're not passionate about mm. and two um, you're not living a happy and fulfilled life mm. um, and so the yeah the more that I get older, I say that I'm still quite young, but you know, the more that I am, am just learning about life, the more I'm like, life is too short. You have to go with what, you know, God given talents, your passions, your purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you obviously have um, uh, a passion for uh, beauty pageants and you went through a season in your life where um, I guess you, you entered quite a few beauty pageants and were very successful. Um, what was your driver and your motivation for, for putting yourself out there? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't, uh, when I look back on my journey, I started in 2014 in pageants. So I've been a creative in terms of performance, like before that, I love singing, I love dancing, and I love speaking. Um, beauty pageants was something that I never thought in my head, I'm definitely going to do, you know, I want to do that. I see these beauty queens and I want to be like that. It was. It was more an opportunity for me to understand my Samoan culture and also um, that was the first ever beauty pageant I entered was Miss Samoa New Zealand um, and my sister Sarah Jane had entered it many years yes. ago and so in the back of my mind I'd always thought my sister did that um, and that was a wonderful celebration and exchange of her culture um, and then an opportunity presented itself where it just grabbed my attention and, and you know, enrolments um, had gone out for competing in Miss Samoa New Zealand online and at the time I was in Dunedin so that all just seemed to work out and I thought, hmm, I've got an inkling that this might, this might lead to something. I didn't really have in my mindset that all of a sudden I would, you know, start on this incredible pageant journey. which and is win four pageants, yeah. <laughs> I just, you know, and because obviously like there are people who, you know, and there are young women who love makeup, who love design, who love dress. I'm going to be honest with you, like, I'm pretty down to earth with, um, with um, dress sense and, and makeup prior to pageants. Um, I didn't really have an understanding of that. Um, and so for me, I was like, oh, this is an awesome opportunity. Maybe I can, uh, maybe I can add to, I guess, um, the strengths and, and see what happens. And it was literally in seeing what would happen that just opened up this incredible door mm. um, for me to learn and about pageants, but also to learn about my Samoa culture and then also to then represent Samoa on the world stage and mm. then also just to refine I think um, who I am as both a Samoan but also someone who's of mixed heritage so my mum being European and my dad being Samoan me growing up in New Zealand and speaking English as well um, and I was the most unlikely candidate I think to have won Miss Samoa New Zealand but then also win Miss Samoa and then go on to, to represent the Pacific as well. Um, I was a very unlikely unlikely candidate because I wasn't raised in, raised, raised in, in, at home, I say at home. Um, but again, like once that door opened, um, the driver for, for me was really just representing my country well and getting to know who I am as a Samoan um, mm. more. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a really interesting topic and I want to hear more about that, but first we've got to take a break. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Latsafali, I have to follow up with you on something you said. You thought that you were one of the most unlikely candidates to win Miss Samoa. What do you think of the challenges uh, for Samoans who are born in New Zealand? Sure, I mean, obviously not being home in Samoa is one. <laughs> But then I guess living in a community where you're surrounded by um, English as the predominant language. Um, and then, um, like, for example, myself, you know, um, I, I don't have, I, bilingualism isn't something that I was, you know, born and raised with, but my identity as a Samoan was definitely, um, definitely cultivated in me from a young age, despite the fact that I couldn't speak uh, Samoan. Um, and I guess one of the reasons why that happened is also education was such a big key. Um, you know, when, when our 
I guess grandmas and grandpas, you know, migrated over to New Zealand, mm. one of the key things that they that they wanted was education, and they wanted the younger generation to do well. And so, um, so for me, a, a big part of my life was excelling and excelling mm. in the school system that I was in. Uh, and, and and so obviously the command of the English language is something that I love. Um, uh, and then the command of the Samoan language is something that I love, but in a different cultural setting, um, having that expectation of me having to, you know, be able to speak Samoan um, made me quite fearful at that time because, um, of course, you don't want to, you don't want to butcher your own language, you know. Um, and so I think for uh, New Zealand Samoans, especially those who are unable to speak the language, um, it's quite a, it's quite, um, I think it's a tough position to be in because we want to and, um, and, and for me at that time, um, I, I was, that was one thing that I, that I couldn't do. Uh, and so when I say I was an unlikely candidate to win Miss Samoa, it was definitely because the language is, you know, it's, it's precious, it's, it's yeah. a gift. Mm. Um, and so I had to cultivate this new mindset and also um, surround myself with an encouraging bubble of people um, who just saw me as Sa a Samoan because Sam, you know, my Samoan is in my blood, my Samoanness mm -hmm. is in my blood, it's in who I am. Um, and also then, you know, um, coming to my culture and just being open hearted and open minded that, um, you know, I can learn. It's never too late to learn, yeah. especially as an adult. Um, and, and, and it's important to learn and it's important to make mistakes, even with the own language, even if even with um, the Fa'asa Moa. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I saw that whole journey as just an incredible learning journey for me to you know, have this opportunity to find out about who I am as a Samoan. My name, Latafale, is is so special, and I've always been the odd one out as well, um, because not many people have, or well, not many people at all have the name Latafale, or have you know Samoan names within the community that I was that I that I had um, my my education community or my school schooling community. Mm -hmm. And, and I loved learning about my name um, because it's, um, it's, it's what they call it. My dad would describe it as a princess title, the Satmai title of the Matea. And my grandmother came over from Samoa and uh, about a couple of years after I was born, my first name is not Latafale, it's Alofa. Mm. Um, but she gave me her title. Um, and so when I started learning about how wonderful, you know, that, that lineage is and where that stems from, um, and then starting to get involved in my culture a lot more. It's just this amazing part of me that all of a sudden I felt just awoken mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I just felt so much more connected to who I am and, and who I am when I say I am a Samoan. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was an unlikely candidate, but thankfully I, you know, when I won Miss Samoa, I had to move over. Um, moved back home, and I had to live and breathe in, this, in, the, in, in Samoa. And I said, one of my goals was, I said, you know, to myself, I said, even though I can't speak fluently, I am going to show my heart and pour my heart out to my community and get involved in absolutely everything that I could. Um, and I think that's what allowed um, people to come out and support my journey mm. and for people to be invested in my journey. Whether or not they were New Zealand Samoans, Australian Samoans, whatever, we're all Samoan. At the end, of it, you know, yeah. we're all Samoan. And, Amen. And yeah, <laughs> they just love, I think we just get, a, we get behind, uh, we get behind, you know, um, we get behind our people. Mm. So I really found that, especially moving to Samoa. That's such a beautiful story. And I think it's one that a lot of children of the migration can relate to. Yeah. Because when our grandparents came here, it was for a better life. It yeah. was for education. It was for, you know, everything that, you know, you've poured your heart and soul into to achieve. And I feel that those of us who have been through that journey, seen those sacrifices, and we focused on the things that our grandparents wanted us to focus on. Mm. Um, but now we feel um, very deeply that loss yeah. of the language that came at a price, yeah. you know, for us. So, I mean, hats off to you for moving to Samoa, for putting yourself out there, for making the mistakes. And, um, you know, I think that is something that's really encouraging for yeah. a lot of people of our generation. Yeah. 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 Awesome. In order to put yourself out there in those beauty pageants, you have to be quite a confident person. Um, was that always something that was innate in you or how was that nurtured? Yes, I think, um, like I said, having good siblings, um, <laughs> 
Actually, it stems from my parents, if I'm going to be honest. My parents are amazing and they always instilled in us as children a sense of self-worth. That comes from our value system um, and knowing who I am um, in my faith, my faith value system. Um, and so um, I guess I was nurtured from a young age to be confident, to put the work in, as they say, do the mahi, um, and, and then just to, yeah, just to know that you're worth something and you're valued mm -hmm. and what you do um, what you do has an effect on other people um, and what you do can have um, you know an important um, an important state like an important say in even in society so my parents um, have always cultivated um, like a great attitude in us we and so I think that also is the reason why um, I've been able to put myself out there um, because yeah the the values that I have faith, love, but also the fact that, you know, God's created me as a child of His and, and then every opportunity that presents itself is not by, you know, not by chance, but there's a purpose. And mm. and so um, in understanding those learnings, um, that's probably been a big backbone to me going out and, and doing what I have <laughs> been doing. But from a young age, mum and dad also put me out, um, you know, on church, at church, singing at church, you yeah. know, in Sunday schools, we would go to old um, retirement villages and um, we would be singing there and we'd be speaking. And I remember mum and dad, um, you know, training us up to um, to speak for, you know, speeches and, and doing all of those um, primary school activities that involve public speaking and involve being in front of people. And so I think that training also um, has added to, you know, has added to me being able to put myself out there. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, actually, it's quite funny. I remember the speech that my brother did on cats uh, when I was in primary <laughs> school. And um, I actually copied nearly the exact same speech <laughs> that he had given. Another the, advantage of having older the siblings. Another advantage yeah. of having older siblings. But no, my parents have always cultivated us a great sense of self-worth mm. and that what we do matters. Um, and, and yeah, just to have confidence in ourselves, even if we don't necessarily get it right yeah. or or, you know, um, yeah, even if we don't really um, think that we're, I guess, you know, completely, uh, you know, inept for the, for the role or whatever it is, they've always been encouraging that, you know, one step forward, one step forward, yeah. And, and, and yeah, you'll see a difference. Yeah, sounds like they encouraged a real growth mindset in it, you and your siblings. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in the beauty pageants, um, even though quite a bit of it's about having beauty with a purpose and um, there is still quite a heavy emphasis on the physical um, attributes. So what I would like to know is in your eyes what makes a person beautiful? <laughs> in my eyes what makes a person beautiful? I have always my number one um, ethos is, is that it stems from the heart first and foremost um, and cultivating you know your heart is beautiful then obviously overflows um, to when you speak to people or, or when you when people see you and also meet you. And so um, as much as it's outward aesthetics, um, which is 100% <laughs> what beauty pageants are all about, let's, <laughs> let's not <laughs> say it's not. It's, uh, you know, that's, that's a huge part thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, part, it's part of, it's part of um, the competition. Um, for me, I think what makes a person beautiful is having a beautiful heart and those attributes which stem, which is, you know, love, kindness, acceptance, understanding, self-worth as well. Um, mm. So, and, and I'm never, the, I'm never, I'm never a person to judge someone by their appearance. I always love having good conversations with people and and seeing maybe what what's on their heart. Um, so yeah, that's. That's how I've always seen it. And that's always how I've wanted to represent myself. Mm. You'll see uh, as well on my social media, um, I do do a lot of encouragements and about, and positive encouragements and that those stem from, you know, how's your heart? What is your attitude? How's your mindset? Um, because I feel like when you're confident and when you know who you are, um, that is, tells so much more than your outward appearance. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, I remember when you were going for uh, Miss World Samoa and you had the whole Samoan community rallying behind you and now you continue to have a social media presence. Do you feel there's a responsibility that comes with having a social media following? Absolutely, absolutely. And I didn't understand that at the time, um, in 2014, kind of 2014, 2015, 2016, my social media 
just kind of exploded and I didn't really have that mindset at the time to oh I'll be an influencer oh I'll do x y and z and um, looking back on that now I'm I'm a lot more understanding that what I put out on social media actually affects people and can mm. actually encourage people and especially the younger generation um, the messages that I receive from people are incredible um, and they really are people sharing their real life stories and situations and also sharing to me how my message or my word or my picture or what I've done has helped them you know make a decision about their life mm. and so when you receive those types of messages from people you really have a stronger understanding of how important it is what you say and what you put out on social media and I think that's even more prevalent today considering the content that is going out on social media um, I am a bit conservative I guess as you'd say um, and so I, I worry for our next generation because um, there's so many voices um, saying so many different opinions um, and expressing so many different things outside of I guess my value set or you know a faith-based value set which I think is beautiful and, and, uh, and amazing that people can get sidetracked and um, and so yeah it's really important for me um, what I put out on social mm. media um, that one it's positive two that it's always encouraging and three that um, it's obviously there's there's a faith-based value to what I'm what I'm saying yeah and so something that comes across very strongly in, in your social media is your relationship with God. So what would you like people to understand about that? that yeah, that it's changed my life. And the reason, for, um, the reason for who I am and what I've achieved. And if you look at all of the things that, um, I guess the successes that people would deem in this world as successes, um, that is all because of my relationship with God and and. Um, that has changed me and cultivated the mindset that I have um, and it allows me the confidence um, understanding who I am as a child of God has allowed me the confidence to um, go out for and really put myself out there for all of these activities um, and so yeah I, I I can't explain the joy that I have um, through you know my relationship with Christ and yeah, I'm just really blessed, um, really blessed to, yeah, and privileged to be in a position that I am. And so everywhere I go, honestly, that's my first and foremost um, message is that in my life, the reason why I am who I am and have done what I've done is because um, I have the God that loves me and he's always been there for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's given you many gifts and what you do with your gifts is um, your present back to him. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that's absolutely. awesome. <laughs> Uh, lots of fun now. I have um, some quick fire questions. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is your go to karaoke song? Oh, my go to karaoke song is. Oh my goodness, what is it? I want to say I would walk 500 miles. I don't know. Really? I do not know why that song popped in my head. But that was the song that popped in, so we'll go for it. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Who was the most influential Pacifica person you saw growing up? Oh, my dad. <laughs> As, um, yeah, actually 100% my dad, um, even though he's probably not in the wider sphere um, of influences, I guess. Um, my dad is definitely one. He's just such a go-getter. He was in politics for a while and, yeah. and in education. And, um, and so I just, I just saw him, obviously from a personal perspective as well, um, yeah. making movements in the community. And so, it's close to home, but it's yep. definitely my dad. Your first teacher and role model. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if you weren't in your current profession, what would you be doing now? Oh, man, what would I be doing? I would literally be going around and and probably being, being a speaker, a positive speaker. Mm. Um, I would love to be like a positive speaker or a life coach of some sort and just sharing about my learnings in life with other people. Um, so if I wasn't, you know, doing what I was doing now, definitely something to do with encouraging people because it's what I love. Hmm. If you could invite any three people in history to a family dinner, who would it be? Michael Jackson, definitely one. Martin Luther King, definitely another. And the third would be, oh my goodness, what would the third be? <laughs> Beyonce. There we Can't are. Past Beyonce. <laughs> Okay, and the last question, how do you want to be remembered? How do I want to be remembered? Um, 
as a loving and kind person and someone who has um, walked, walked the talk, you know, yeah. Awesome. Latafale, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a real blessing to hear about your journey. Thank you for having me. It's been an <laughs> honour. <laughs>